And we are coming up on a rather grim uh, anniversary in the history of our great area of Acadiana City of Lafayette. And I think uh, we have, uh, I guess, we haven't moved on in forgetting or or letting the memory go, but we have moved on in in really realizing what we have and where we live right now and how special it is to all of us. The man at the helm uh, of the city parish government at the time, Joey Durrell, joins us on the phone. Good morning. Good morning. You know, um, Mr. Durrell, you know, it was um, just, uh, it was a surreal experience for everybody uh, involved. Obviously, much more so for the families of those who died, for the people who were injured. But that uh, that particular day, the following days, um, it was amazing the amount of strength that this community showed to one another in the wake of what happened. Right. Yeah, no, that, that's uh, when you when you when you have something that horrible happen, you know, you obviously we as I think it's natural for us to latch on to as many positive things as you can. Uh, it's how how you it would help move you on. And um and the thing that you can't deny is is the the strength that you have as a community. And, um, you know, if you remember the time, uh, Lafayette had just been named the happiest city in America. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have all these positive things going for us. And, uh, and then something like this happens. And uh, to see the people uh, respond the way they did. Uh, in fact, listening to your conversation just before you, uh, we got on the air um, about the police officer in Baton Rouge, uh, the services being held today for it. Uh, I've, I've done a few interviews recently in the last couple of days. and. You know, one of the questions that are asked, what what is what is what is one of your greatest memories, or you know, memories that you have of it? And I say, well, in light of the the news we hear of the sort of animalistic behavior we've we've witnessed in America in mm-hmm. recent times, um, I said, you know, you don't forget, I was out of town when this happened, and uh, I landed back in Lafayette about ten hours after. So that night was a scramble of trying to get back to Lafayette from where we were on, vac- on family vacation, and uh, when I got here. Uh, I, I got to the theater about 5.30 in the morning, so about almost 10 hours exactly after the event happened. And uh, sometime midday, uh, I was in the um, command center with the police chief and, and several of the police officers. And a comment I heard relative to what we're experiencing today was one of the police officers said, you know, we see, pe- we see cities in other parts of the country throwing bricks at their policemen. Here in Lafayette, they're throwing food to us. Mm-hmm. And... And and it really it, that is that's one of the takeaways that I had was because it made me very proud of this community and I think even today I saw one of our police officers somewhere last night and uh, and I know they just feel very appreciated. Uh, this community did that then and I think it continues to do that. I think it always has. But I believe when you experience something like that, those are the kind of things that really show what kind of a people we really are. Mm-hmm. And uh, and our police officers do feel appreciated by the people of Lafayette. What do you think, what do you think it is that gives us all this strength? I mean, I don't, I guess the adversity of what we're made of, the things that we've always been through. Yeah. But, you know, it just. Well, think about it, Bernie. I mean, you know, one of the things in in talking in my office ended up putting together uh, one of these TED Talks last year. Mm -hmm. And the theme of it was, you know, my personal 12-year tenure was bookended by two tragedies. Shortly after I got in office, we had Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. And as I pointed out in the TED Talk, you know, we think we're pretty prepared for yep. hurricanes, but we weren't really prepared for something like an influx of 40,000 people coming into Lafayette yep. all of a sudden. And yet, as it turns out, we were prepared because we have, we have a history of helping each other. And so you know, you fast forward almost, you know, 10 and a half years later to the end of my term and six months before I'm out of office, this happens. And, and how do you ever prepare for something like this? And so you think you're not prepared for something like this, but as it turns out, you're much better prepared than you thought. And so what I've pointed out to people in the national media is that when a hurricane passes, at some point we all end up boarded up in our homes or whatever. And um, when it's all passed, you go outside and you look around your house and say, oh, good, we survived it. And you look down the street and you say, uh-oh, they didn't do so well. Right. So you pick up your gathering, pick up what you can, 
your family goes over there and you help them in, with their situation. And so it's the history of, of people that have struggled to get to where they came from Nova Scotia, um, uh, from Africa, wherever else. And, and what we have in this, and, and I've said this for many, many years in Lafayette, we're a very unique area in Acadiana. We're a very unique area of a very unique state. And what makes us so unique is that the first three or four cultures that settled in our part of the state were all forced here from somewhere else. And not only did we have to assimilate to survive, we assimilated and, 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 and thrived. And then you add to that the, the, the wild counter mentality, the oil and gas industry. And we are very entrepreneurial people. We're a, a people that, um, that work hard together to excel. And, uh, and I, so I think in the end, um, and maybe it's human nature, and maybe we're saying this is unique about our area, and I think it is. But in human nature, I think, in a tragedy, we all kind of help. And mm-hmm. uh, and so I, there's no doubt in my mind that the, the the history of our of our area, of our state, of our country is all good, bad, whatever, however you want to view that history aspects of it. It all contributes to the culture that we have today. Mm-hmm. How do you think things have, you have obviously since, um, you know, come out of your, or of, of your office, you're now in the private sector and, you know, I'm sure the perspective is a little bit, a little bit different now. Mm-hmm. How do you think things have, have changed for us? You know, it, it almost seems like a lifetime has passed in this past year. Right. Well, you know, you're right. And uh, as I tell friends, it's a whole different flavor of Kool-Aid out here. Oh, I bet. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you, you know we, we all drink the Kool-Aid that we're responsible for at the time. And we all, um, you know, if you're doing, I think if you're doing your job properly, no matter where you are, private sector or not, um, whatever company you're working for, you're loyal to that company and you work hard for that company as you should. Um, so in, in a case like this, I mean, I, I drank private sector Kool-Aid for most of my life. For a brief period of time, I drank the Kool-Aid of, of elected office and mm-hmm. responsibility that, that came with that, and uh, now I see a different. But you're, there's no doubt. I think the thing that what in that in this past year and what this event caused us to do is to realize we're not quite as insulated as we thought we were. Yeah. Um, that there there's a real changing world out there, um, and you know those people my age or older are more more concerned about. Uh, knowing what we were born into and the opportunities and the um, the struggles that it took to achieve those opportunities, to take advantage of those opportunities. And we wonder, are uh, those that come after us, are they going to have those same types of opportunities? I mean, the security, just as a child. I mean, to think that, you know, my, my grandchildren have to watch the news and see the kind of idiocy that's taking place in this country today where policemen are somehow the villains, and the villains are somehow the victims, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not, that's not what I want my, my grandchildren to see. I want, I want them to realize that the police officers are good for them. They're, 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 they're protectors. Um, they are what keep them safe. And, and so I've used what we've, what we've had, unfortunately, uh, with my grandchildren seeing some of this stuff, to use that as a teaching opportunity to say, first of all, don't commit the crime. Second of all, if a police officer stops you, you say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, like you do to any other adult. Mm-hmm. And if they say, do something, you say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And you, and you, you, you know, you, you respond politely. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, they are not the enemy. And, um, and so, you know, like I said, I've, I've used these as a teaching opportunity. I just wish I was teaching them math instead. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I, wish, I, know. I, wish, I wish these things weren't, weren't uh, so visible for people who should have feel nothing but security right now. That's all, you know, that's all you want your kids, your, the youngest people to, to feel. You want them to feel that they've got a safe place to, to, to live. They've got um, security that they're going to have, they're going to have food on the table and mom and dad are good and whatever else. And, uh, and these kind of things are just not the kind of things that we weren't exposed to a 24 hour news cycle when I was growing up. Even yeah. if these kind of things were happening, um, it was, it didn't, it didn't occupy the news for the like for the next three or four or five days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it didn't, it didn't, you know, while you could see it and it was there, like you said, it wasn't 24-7 that it was put in front of your face and really shoved right. down your throat. You know, right. it was a just a, a different world. Right. 
Joey Durrell has been joining us uh, this morning. Sir, I want to thank you for your time, first off. And thank I, you. I know you will never uh, forget, but do thank you very much also uh, for the leadership during that time and helping the community move forward because that was extremely important. Well, you know, there's no doubt we had a, a good, good group in place. I mean, mm-hmm. Jim Kraft, Chief mm-hmm. Kraft, was awesome. He handled himself so well on national television, and um, I heard so many compliments. I had, if you remember, I probably said this back then, but I had national media people come up to me and say, Mr. Durrell, I've got to tell you, we see a lot of these sort of things, unfortunately. We, we go from tragedy to tragedy, it seems like, these days. Um, but while we go to some places where... The community kind of comes across, quite frankly, looking a little silly. I got to tell you, this community has come across looking very good. Very good. Mm-hmm. Y'all have handled things very well, and I, I, my hats off to Chief Jim Kraft and his his whole group and all of our first responders. Absolutely, Mr. Joey Durrell has been our guest as always. We don't do it every Thursday anymore. But nope, it's, nope. It's still wonderful to talk to you. Well, you know, uh, the good news is about radio. Uh, I still don't have to be out of my pajamas. So it's, uh... <laughs> Me either. Rob and I come in our pajamas all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I've 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 enjoyed myself, but uh, um, but I'm, I appreciate y'all remembering my name. Well, thank you, and I hope y'all have a great weekend. All right. You okay. Too. Thank take you. care. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.